Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number five on getting your GPS tracker built based on the most excellent Adafruit GPS breakout and the BeagleBone Black. If you've been with us through the four, first four lessons, you should already have your GPS unit hooked up and running and spitting out good data to your uh, uh, terminal window. So that just has everything sort of working. Last lesson, or lesson three, was really the hardest lesson where we went in and we used Python to parse those NEMA sentences coming off of the uh, coming off of the GPS. So if you haven't done those lessons yet, you really need to go back and catch up with us and do those lessons. <clears throat> also, we're going to do today, we're going to use today something that we learned in lesson number four, and that was how to transfer files back and forth between your desktop PC and the BeagleBone Black, and we will need to do that. Where we are starting today, if you will go to toptechboy.com, and then uh, if you will go to these series of lessons on the BeagleBone Black, and if you will go to lesson uh, bottom, the uh, BeagleBone Black GPS Tracker Project, if you go to lesson number three, you will see the software posted there, which was the so we started uh, that we're going to start this lesson with, because this is the software that parses the NEMA sentences, talks and listens to the GPS, gets everything set up just the way we need it. So rather than completely redevelop this, we will start with this code. How do you get this code on your BeagleBone Black? Well, I'm going to copy it, so I'm going to say Control C. Okay, I need to create a file for that, and I've got so many windows here. I will close these windows. Okay, I need a file, so I'll open up a notepad, uh, or I'll actually open up, yeah, I'll open up a no notepad. Okay, and then <clears throat> I copied it, so I will paste it in the notepad. So I will say, uh, hopefully, I can paste, yeah. There it goes. <laughs> that looks good. Now I will save it to my desktop on the PC. So I'll go to desktop. I am going to save this as GPS tracker.py like that. So I'll save it GPS tracker.py. That looks good. I will close it. You notice that it shows up here as GPS tracker.py. That looks good. Now I need to get that over to the BeagleBone Black so that I can start editing it over on the BeagleBone Black side. So remember in lesson number four, the last lesson, the uh, BeagleBone Black GPS project lesson number four, I showed you how to install WinSCP. And you will want to uh, use WinSCP. And uh, I can log on as root to my uh, BeagleBone Black user. And look at that, it is all logged on. And now it's a FileZilla. If you're familiar with FileZilla, this is a whole lot like that. I need to go to my desktop, so I will go up and I will come back to my desktop. And then down here, I should be able to find that GPS tracker EF. <laughs> I hope you keep your desktop neater than I keep my desktop. G GPS tracker.py. And remember, I keep all these programs in my Python. <coughs> so I will bring that over to my Python. And now it should be over there ready for me to use. So at this point, I will go back to my terminal window on the BeagleBone Black. And that should be right here. Okay, so now we are on the terminal window on the BeagleBone Black. Let's do a change directory to, or let's first of all I'll see where are we, PWD. I'm in my root. Uh, let's see what's in there. Uh, I've got my, my Python folder, so let me go down there, my <coughs> Python, and now let me look, and I should see GPS track. Okay, very good. That's what we're going to work with. So I'm going to say nano, to edit it, GPS tracker.py. Boom. Okay. So this is starting with that last program that we did. I think we called it gps.py. Remember? That is where we, we are starting. Okay. Now you remember all this was just configuring the uh, 
uh, variables that allow us to configure the GPS. These are commands that we can send to the GPS. We set up a bunch of commands, but we didn't we didn't send but just a few. What I want to do this time is I want to tweak these just a little bit for the me going out and walk around because I just don't want enormous data files, so I don't need it to run uh, quite as many measurements. I'm going to leave it at the fast baud rate, so I'm going to leave it here at serial.write baud 57,600. I kind of like that. And then the, the baud rate here uh, for the talking to it now is set at that. And now what I want to do is as I write these things down here where I'm actually sending the commands, I don't want to update five times a second. I want to update one time a second. And so if we go back up and look at the measurement, okay, that would say I want to do measure underscore one underscore second. And so so I want to edit that to slow it down just a little bit. So this is going to be uh, underscore one underscore. Take the M off because it was just SEC. And same thing on the measurement. How often do I want to measure? I want to measure once a second. So I'll say one. Okay, and take that off. So now I'm going to, the GPS is going to, update once a second and measure a second. Now just keep the files from getting too big. Go out and walk around. What we're going to try to do instant is we are going to get this where the data from the uh, system that we put together is going to be brought into Google Earth and we're going to be able to look at things on Google Earth. So we're going to get the BeagleBone Black and the uh, Adafruit Ultimate GPS talking to Google Earth. I probably should have said that to start with. I'm kind of late in the lesson to be telling you what the lesson is about, but I'll give it a good title, so hopefully you'll you'll have that figured out. All right, so we come down over here, and we're, we're going to be updating a little bit slower. <coughs> we still want the GPRMC, and we still want the uh, and we yeah we want uh, we want the GPRMC and the GPGGA sentence if. The this doesn't make sense to you. Go back in earlier lessons where I explained it all. Then we're not going to mess with this uh, this uh, function where we read the GPS because that's working. We're able to go out. We're able to read the GPS. That is all working. Okay. This is where we're really going to do things down in the main body. A couple of things. If we're going to go out in in this last software where it exists right now, we were just taking measurements and spitting it out to the terminal window showing what the measurements were. But if we're going to go out and walk around, we're going to need to put it in a file. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to set up a file. So let me see if we can set up a file. I'm not sure if we've done this in this series of lessons, so this might be kind of new to you. But the first thing that we did is we created a GPS object which calls that sub that uh, that class up at the very top where we uh, where we create where we set up the GPS, so that was from our earlier lessons. What we are going to do here is we are going to create a file. So I'm going to call, uh, I'm going to create an object which will allow me to interact with a file, and that object is going to be called GPS data. Okay, and then I'm going to say it's equal to open. Now I'm going to have to open a file. Where is the file going to be? I'm going to put it in root and I'm going to put it in. Remember we had that little folder called GPS underscore data. If you don't have these folders it would be wise to create them because I don't know if you'd create a problem trying to go to a folder that doesn't exist. So you want to make sure that they're there before you run the program and then <coughs> gps.txt okay, and then comma w like such. All right, we're creating an object that will allow us to interact with a file. The object is going to be called GPS data. And so we're opening a what? A file. Where is the file? It's slash root slash GPS underscore data slash file name, which is GPS.txt, comma. And then this W in the single quotes means make it a file to write to. When you open it as write, What's it going to do? When you open it, it's going to erase anything that was there. So we're creating the file here, and if it's if there's an old file there, it will erase it. So we don't just keep tacking on a bunch of old data. What do I want to do after I do that? Well, now I'm just going to close it. GPS data dot close. All right. Why did I open it and close it? Well, because 
I want to erase it before I get down here. But once I get down here, I want to be I want to be bringing the data in. Okay. So that should open it and close it. Okay. Now, <clears throat> when I come down here, I still want to, I've got now this infinite loop that's going to loop forever, but it's going to do something a little different. I'm still going to be calling that GPS read, but, but now I'm going to be trying to, you know, trying to build a file instead of just spitting it to the, to the uh, uh, terminal window. So I'm still going to read it. So I'm going to say my GPS dot read that'll go up and that'll make a read off of the uh, of the uh, uh, GPS I really don't want to print so I'm going to take these two things out because we just put those in really to kind of debug it anyway to begin with it so we're going to do the, the my GPS read now what do we want to do well we really want to see only if we have a fix. We don't want to go in and start saving data to a file if we don't have a fix. So we want to kind of wait till there's a fix. So I'm going to say if, GP, if my GPS.fix, well, does it know what that is? Yeah, because when I did this read, it got all the data in my GPS.fix. It's saying if my GPS.fix is not equal to zero. Well, if my GPS.fix is equal to zero, that means I don't have a fix. If it's not equal to zero, then that means I, I do have a fix. And if I do have a fix, then I want to come down and start doing some neat stuff down here. So I'm going to get rid of this stuff from the last program because this was just printing to the serial monitor, which I don't want to do anymore. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of all this stuff from last week's program. Okay, so what do I want to do? Uh, well, first of all, I don't want my program to crash if it tries to read something and it's not there. Like, let's just say for some reason I went up and I made a read and there was a bad data or there was a bad comma somewhere. I don't want this program to crash if something's out of place. And the way you do that is you just do something that says try. And that's sort of of like an if or sort of like a while it's, it's, it's a clause under there but it says try the things underneath here in this clause and if they work out good if they don't then jump to accept and so this is a way that if you get a little glitch it doesn't actually uh, kill your program and what I'm going to go ahead and do is anytime you have a try you need to have an accept so I'm going to go ahead and build this out and what do I want to do? Well, if I try and it doesn't work, it jumps down into the accept. And what do I want to do in the accept? I don't want to do anything. I just want to pass. Okay. So this is, you know, try and accept. And the only thing I do in accept is pass. And so that's just saying, if you get a glitch, don't worry about it. Just go back and try again. Okay. Now, you got to see that the try is creating a claw. You've got to end thing under it, just like an if or just like a while. Okay. So now, what do I want to do? Well, the first thing that I want to do is I want to format the data. I want to format the data where it will work with Google Earth. Okay. Normally, you think like lat, lawn, and altitude. Uh, latitude, longitude, altitude. Well, the goofy thing is that Google Earth wants longitude first, then latitude, and then altitude. It wants longitude, comma, latitude, comma, altitude, space. Don't put a carriage return, don't put a new line. And what Google Earth wants to see is longitude, comma, latitude, comma, altitude, space. And then go back to the next longitude. Also, Google Earth in these KML files does not want degrees decimal minutes, which is what the uh, Adafruit spits out in those NEMA sentences. It typically is, or it is, is degrees and then decimal minutes. What Google Earth wants is decimal degrees. And we're going to have to in here convert degrees decimal minutes into decimal degrees. Okay, and that's what we're going to do now. So what I want is I want lat decimal. Okay, I want lat decimal. 
Well, what do I have? I have uh, I have latitude degrees, and so I want to start with that. So I'm going to and remember that all these things are strings. So I'm going to have to float it. I'm going to float. What am I going to float? My GPS dot lat degree. Okay. So what is this doing? Lat degree is your latitude degrees. I'm going to start with that, and then I'm going to convert the lat minutes to a decimal degree. But I got to start with the latitude degrees, which we already have. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to float. And now this is the second part of it. My GPS dot what? Lat minute divided by 60 point. Don't forget the point because you got to force it to be floating point math. So what is this saying? If I have degrees, like whole degrees, like integer degrees, and I have decimal minutes, how many minutes in a degree? 60. So if I take the decimal minutes and divide it by 60 point to try to force the floating point math, that will give me the fraction of a degree that I have, the decimal frac degree. And then I just add that back to my whole degrees. So when I add the degrees plus the decimal degrees, which I'm here, when I add the, what am I going to get? I'm going to get decimal degrees, if that makes sense. So that's going to be latitude decimal. All right. Did not <clears throat> mean to do that. And I'm sorry this is running off the screen, guys. I am sorry. Sorry this is running off the screen, but uh, just bear with me. So what else am I going to need? Well, I've got lat. I'm going to need lon. So I'm going to say lon decimal. Okay, my lon decimal is equal to same thing. Float my GPS dot what? Lon degrees, which we go do that up in that function, right? That's already been done. Plus what? Float. I've got to get the fractional degree. How do I get the flat fractional degree? It's my GPS dot, okay, my GPS dot lon minute divided by 60. What did I forget? You got to put that point in there because if you don't put a point at the end of 60, it'll do a des it'll do a integer division, it'll go to zero. You have to force the floating point math by putting the point on your numbers like that. Uh, there is no way to tell you how many times I see students banging their head against the wall because they are doing integer math instead of forcing it to do floating point math. Okay. Now also remember in those NEMA sentences that the Adafruit GPS is, is telling us in those NEMA sentences, hey, you're in the West Hemisphere W or you're in the North Hemisphere N. But you see, Google Earth doesn't want to know North and West. What it wants to know is, is that if you have a positive number on uh, latitude, that would be in the, norm, uh, in the Northern Hemisphere. If you have a positive number on longitude, that would be in the eastern hemisphere. So what we got to do is, is, if you're in the southern hemisphere, you got to make this number negative. And if you're in the western hemisphere, you got to make this number ne negative. So how are we going to do that? Well, we just are going to do some if statements. Remember, there was on that NEMA sentence, there was that W and N, and we've just got to go in and those NEMA sentences and see if we have a W. So I'm going to say if my GPS dot out, uh, I mean if my GPS and what was that? It was lon hem, just like that L-O-N capital H-E-M. That's saying what hemisphere am I in longitudinally? If that is equal to and it's an uppercase W. If that is equal to an uppercase W, then what do I want to do? Well, in that case, I want to say that lon decimal is equal to minus one times 
lawn decimal like that. All right. Okay. And you could do the same thing. You could say that if my GPS dot lat him is equal equal to south. you would make it negative then lat decimal equals minus one times lat decimal okay so that will take care of the positive and the negative the north and the south the east and the west and make Google Earth happy alright what else am I gonna need well I'm gonna need my altitude so I'm just gonna say altitude ALT is equal to my GPS like that dot altitude alright now I have everything I need to start writing the file if I'm gonna write the file what's the first thing I've got to do I'm gonna do a GPS data <coughs> equals I gotta open it so I'm gonna because remember up at the top we closed it so now we gotta open it again and where is it? It's going to be in slash root slash GPS underscore data slash GPS dot txt. Okay, that is the file. Okay, remember the, when we created it, we did it with a W to write, which means we erased the old data. Now we want to stack the data up, so we don't want to do it in a write. We want to do an append, so we do a comma. <coughs> a quote, an A, close quote, close parentheses. And so that will start stacking the up in a file. So now it's open. Now I've got to create this string that I want to write to it, this string of data. And what does Google Earth want? It wants lat, it wants lawn, comma, lat, comma, altitude, space. No carriage return, no end of line. So what am I going to do? I'm going to create that string, my string, and then it'll just be right. It is equal to, okay. Right now we did a calculation, so this lat des and this lawn des are numbers. They're floating point uh, numbers. So to build this string, we've got to convert them to strings. So I'm going to say str. So that just takes says take the string value of, of this variable. Well, what variable do I want? Lawn decimal so it takes that decimal longitude number that we just created it makes a string out of it so we can stack it together and then add that to that means stack them together it doesn't mean like three plus three it means like on the end build the string up by adding things to the end of it so what do I want what did I say I wanted after the decimal longitude what did I say need a comma so I put the comma in. Now what do I need? <coughs> I am going to need the string str of what? Lat decimal. Okay, like that. Now what do I need? Need another comma. Okay, now what do I need? I need altitude. Let's see, plus, okay, I got the comma, and I'm going to add altitude. That altitude is still, because remember, this returns all strings, so alt is going to be a string, so I don't need to convert that to a string, because it already is. And what was the last thing I said I needed after altitude? I need a space, so I'm going to put a single quote, space, single quote. That should format things right, okay? Now, I've got the string. What do I have to do? I've got to put it in this file, this gps.data file. So what am I going to do? I'm going to say gps data. GP, got to spell it right. GPS data dot write. What do I want to write to that file? My string, like that. Okay. Now, after I write it, what do I need to do? I need to close the file. So I'm going to say gps gps data dot close 
Okay. And uh, I, I got a little mess up here. One little mess up. This except has to be indented just like the try. So what do I try? I try all these things. If I fail, what do I go to? I go to up. And what does except do? Except just passes. And so that is pretty, uh, that is pretty simple. So what's this going to do? This should just sit here and it should just loop. Let me see if I can get this. It should just sit here and it should loop. And what it's going to loop through is it's going to make a read on the GPS. If the GPS has a fix, then it's going to create this string of what your position is in lon, comma, lat, comma, altitude, space. And it's going to just sit and write that to a file. And then we should be able to come back in and we should be able to get that to work in Google Earth. Okay, so what do I want to do? I want to control O and then Y. I like that. No, I messed up. Sorry. Control X or Control C. Let me try that again. Control C. Okay. So what do I do? I Control O. I don't put a Y. I just put an Enter and then I put a Control X to exit out. And now we are going to try Python GPS Tracker.py. This shouldn't do anything because we didn't put any prints. But what I want to see is I want to see that I don't get an error. Okay. So it says it's initialized, and now it should just be sitting there trying to make a measurement. So what I got to do now is I got to go outside. I mean, I think the program's running without an error. So what I got to do now is I got to I got to get a fix. I got to walk around a little bit and then bring it back in here so that we'll have a file to work with. Go ahead, get a cup of coffee. Or actually, I'm drinking tea today. And then uh, if you're with me, get your set up and go outside and see if you get along with me. We will a couple of minutes. Okay, guys, I am back. I uh, unplugged from the Ethernet. I went, I walked around outside, came back in, plugged back in. I am now connected back up to the BeagleBone Black. And I probably am going to need to see if I can kill the Python program. It's still running Control-C. I killed it. First thing is I wanted to see did I get some data. So I'm going to go to... Uh, uh, let's see, where am I? PWD. I am in root my Python, so I'm going to just say catalog. Let me just look at the file. Up, up. Where did we put it? We put it in GPS underscore data. I believe that's what I called it. And then uh, I believe we call it gps.txt. Do we even have any data there? Okay, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Uh huh. Who just got some data? I did. All right. So let's look at this. So this looks like a longitude, or let's see, uh, kind of got in the middle of one there, but but let's let's start right here. So this looks like longitude, comma latitude, comma altitude, space, longitude, comma latitude, comma altitude, space. All right, so that looks good. What, to get this into Google Earth, we need to bring it over to our desktop PC. And then how do we do that? Uh, how do we do that? Remember, we, we had that program in lesson number four called WinSCP. So let's open that up. Okay. You put your IP address there. This is my IP address, but I'm going to log on. And then it's connecting up. Continue. All right. And then here is this program like FileZilla. Okay, over on this side is the BeagleBone Black. Over on this side is your desktop PC. And so if I come into just my root folder on the BeagleBone Black, I would want to go down to the GPS data. That, that is the file I want, gps.txt. Where do I want to put it? I want to put it on my desktop. So I come over here and I go to desktop. You just navigate to your desktop. And now I'm just going to drag and drop it over desktop. Okay, there was already a file there by that name. That's okay. We're going to overwrite it. And now I should have it right here. Let's look at it. Boom! There is all data that we were just looking at. Okay, there is all that data that we were just looking at. All right. How do I get this text file to display in Google Earth? 
Okay, if I just came in and did something like, let's say, open with Google Earth, it's not going to work. Okay, I am sorry, it is not easy because even though we have the things that we want, you know, we have this lat and we have this lawn, or we have this lawn, comma, lat, comma, altitude space. Google Earth wants like a KML or KMZ wrapper. It wants a wrapper around that data. You know, kind of get to know each other a little bit. Like, what font size? What color you take? Those types. You got to put that one there. So rather than try to spend six months teaching you how to build a wrapper, we're just going to get one that I've already put together. And it's kind of a general purpose one that will probably work very well for you. How do you get that KML or KMZ wrapper? Well, you go to the most excellent website, toptechboy.com. My website, uh-huh. You go there, go to the Arduino lessons, and on our since you go down to number uh, 25, which was displaying your GPS data files, okay? And then you go down, and you go down in that lesson. This was the good to run the uh, GPS on the Arduino. You don't want that. But you come down here, and this is that KML wrapper. It's that second file there. Okay, it is the second file. And so what we want to do is we want to copy this. So I'm going to come here and click, and then Control-C. All right. And now I'm going to create a file on my desktop. So I'm going to say Notepad, and now I'm going to paste that. This is the KML wrapper. You don't need to know anything about this except for where it says coordinates. <coughs> That's where you want the coordinates, between coordinates and end coordinates. You want them right in here. So what do I do? I'm going to go over to my GPS file. This is what we just copied from the BeagleBone onto the desktop. I'm going to do a Control A to select all that data then a Control C to copy that data and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste it. Boom! I just pasted it. What do I do now? I save it. <coughs> what do I want to save it as? Okay, I want to probably save it as my walk dot KMZ. I think I can save it as KMZ. Let's see. Save, okay, and then close it. And then look at this, mywalk.kmz. What do I want to do with that? I want to open with, open with Google Earth. Boom. Crash. Is it going to be walk? It's coming. And I'm not seeing any data. Let's, oh, it's there. It just, it just didn't zoom in. So I'm going to do a U to come up. And then you see we've got data here. I just need to zoom in. I panicked. There was no reason to panic. OK. So now if we look at this track on Google Earth, how come, like here is where I am right here, like under that air conditioner inside. I come outside, and it has me up like 800 feet or something like that, or maybe several hundred feet anyway. Did I come outside? Outside and jump? No, I didn't come outside and jump. When I came outside, the GPS got a fix. It probably started with like three satellites, and the altitude was not good. As I kind of linger around here a little bit, it's picking up more satellites, and then it's getting a good altitude. On these GPSs, they will get good longitude and good latitude much easier and quicker and with fewer satellites than altitude. But if you see, after a few minutes as I'm kind of walking this direction, it went ahead and it got a good altitude. And so by about here, the altitude is pretty good. Okay, so let's kind of zoom in here. You can see I came out the door. If I would have just stayed there for five minutes and given it a chance to kind of find some more satellites, I would have had a good altitude. But you see it comes on down. And then right about here, it has me about 10 feet, and then probably here about 6 feet. So this is actually pretty accurate. As I'm walking around, it has me about 6 feet. You go one gate, came here, kind of walked a little catty corner. And then I came across here, and then I walked all the way down here. You can see it has a little bit of drift. I did not actually go in these people's yard. I did stay out here kind of on the, you know, right by the side of the street. So it's maybe about four feet off there and then came back. But look, what happened to me here? It's like I disappeared. Let me tell you what happens. The, it's a lot more accurate on latitude and longitude than it is on elevation. And this probably, like, I think where I am, I'm at 743 meters above sea level. And if there was a little noise in this thing and it read 742, it would have put me under the ground. And you can kind of see these faint dots. It's saying that I've tunneled underground. 
Now, why in Tunnel Underground? It's just the uncertainty in the uh, in the um, uh, elevation reading from the GPS. Now, if that bothers you, what you can do is you can sort of have an if statement in there and say if it's less than what your known altitude is, set it at your known altitude, and that way it won't go underground. Or if you're just driving around or doing things on ground level, don't do elevation, just do longitude and latitude, and, and that should uh, work in a KML file. I do this because I do high altitude ballooning, and so for high altitude ballooning, man, I want to know that altitude. And once I'm up, you know, 15, 20 feet, I won't have this tunneling under the ground problem anymore, okay? You can see here, it looks like I went underground again, and then I came here, and then underground, and then came back in the, in the house. So I'm going to call this a success. You'd put one more if statement if if you didn't want it to, to, to go underground. If you come outside and wait five minutes before you started walking around, you give this a chance to uh, come down to a more reasonable value. But this is pretty cool. We built a GPS tracker from scratch, right? We parsed the NEMA sentences from scratch by ourselves, and then we created this KML file that we can display on Google Earth. I think this is really cool. I hope you follow along lessons with me, and I hope you're out kind of pursuing your own ideas. You know, if you were thinking about high altitude ballooning, you might think about adding a pressure sensor at this point. You might think about adding a non-axis sensor so you can kind of track that, uh, that, uh, attitude of your uh, of your flight platform but the GPS is probably the hardest thing to do and once you got that working you can now think about putting some other uh, some other features and some other centers sensors on it okay this has been a really neat project thanks for following along you know hope you guys got some good stuff out of this Paul McWhorter toptechboy.com I will talk to you guys later